take a drone and fly over the earth you shall find that it is full of natural wonders one can find mountains plateaus valleys hills plains deserts grasslands etc you can also find vast ocean seas rippling rivers and the list is endless so we find that the outer surface of the earth comprises of mainly two things huge landforms and water bodies the green cover and blue cover the green cover refers to the landforms and the blue cover is the water bodies now the mountains hills plateaus plains that i was talking about are part of landforms whereas oceans rivers seas streams lakes etc belong to the water bodies now the landforms or the land cover comprises only a small portion of the earth's surface well the land area is about 29% of the total earth surface and the rest 71% is of water so the land area is nearly about 1/4 of the total earth's surface so we find that the land surface is very small compared to the water area and not all parts of this small portion is equally habitable well this is so because the nature and topography of the landforms vary in some parts you can find huge mountains and in another parts you can find coast islands plains deserts grasslands plateaus etc so there is a wide variety of landforms found on earth and each type of landform is quite different from that of the another now since the nature of land varies therefore each type of landform is used for different purposes now look at these mountains the mountains are usually very tall and the summit or the topmost part of the mountains usually remains covered with snow throughout the year also mountain soil is not much suitable for cultivation or agriculture it is only suitable for growing certain variety of crops like tea coffee berries etc now since mountains do not have a flat terrain so the farmers cut out slopes of terraces along the slopes of the mountain and this is known as terrace farming and it is usually practiced in mountains now mountains are sparsely populated because they do not provide favorable living conditions that is mountains have rugged topography and cool climate throughout the year which is not much suitable for human habitation now coming to plains plains are vast area of fertile land and they are usually rich in silt and alluvium and they also have ample supply of water because of which plains are intensely used for agriculture so agriculture is densely practiced on plains now plains are also suitable for various constructional activities like building roads houses industries etc so plains are very favorable for human habitation and therefore plains are densely populated at least they have high population density now another type of economic activity that is forestry is also practiced on land and it is usually practiced in places that are densely covered with trees as in case of forest for example the sundarbans of india again places that have rich mineral deposits their mining is usually done and it is mostly practiced in plateaus 
for example the chotanagpur plateau region of india thus it is found that the landforms according to its nature are used for various purposes and this act of using land for various purposes to suit its nature is known as land use and we just saw that various types of economic activities are practiced on lands according to its nature for example agriculture is practiced in plains again construction activities are also done in plains mining is usually practiced in plateaus whereas forestry is done in forest now the land use reflects how society uses and modifies the land it also reflects human intervention with the environment now before continuing with our lesson let us see if you can answer this question which of the following economic activities is not practiced on land and the options given are agriculture mining forestry or fishing well we just discussed that agriculture mining and forestry is practiced on land whereas fishing that is catching fishes from water is dependent on water resources and it is not an activity that is directly linked with land so the option will be fishing well can you recognize this building yes this is antilia one of the most luxurious buildings in the world this massive multi storied mansion features a salon spa health centers a ballroom a 50 seated theater massive garage and even a snow room so you see various luxurious amenities are present in this single building now just imagine you me or any other common man desires to spend a weekend in this building will we be allowed to do so well of course not this is because antilia is the private residence of a well known industrialist mukesh ambani and his family in other words this luxurious apartment is exclusively owned by him and his family and we cannot enter antilia without his permission so antilia is an example of private property now just imagine there is this park in front of antilia now do you think you can be prohibited from entering this park well no this is because this park is collectively owned by the local residents of this locality so neither you nor me or any other residents living in this locality including the ambani family cannot be prohibited from entering this park so this park is an example of common property so based on ownership land resources can be classified into two categories private property and common property private properties are exclusively owned by individuals example houses residences offices etc so antilia is an example of private property whereas common property are collectively owned by a community or local residents of that locality so some examples of common property are parks community halls forest etc 
So till now we discuss about the meaning of land resources, different types of land resources and different benefits of land as a resource. We understood that land is a valuable natural resource and it can be used for different purposes like constructional activities, agriculture, mining, etc. Now, the people and their demands are never ending and because of which it is creating immense pressure on land. So, vast areas of forest need to be cleared off to fulfill the growing demand of human civilization and this is leading to deforestation. The land thus obtained is utilized for various constructional activities, agriculture, etc. So from here we can understand that how the use of land as a resource is changing. Earlier it was a forest and now it has converted into a city. So we find that deforestation and urbanization are leading to misuse or overuse of land resources and it is eventually causing land degradation. Again, there has been uncontrolled migration of people from rural to urban centers for better future prospects. And this is creating or giving rise to slums. Also, these people are encroaching common property like roads, pavements, etc. for trade and other commercial activities as in the case of hawkers. Thus, we find that the use of land as a resource is changing to suit the need of human beings. And this is leading to land degradation and desertification. So, how can we conserve this precious resource that is land? We just discussed that overpopulation is creating tremendous pressure on land resources and the rate of land degradation needs to be stopped immediately in order to conserve land resource. One method in which land reclamation can be practiced is irrigation and it is usually done in arid regions as in case of Thar Desert. Construction of Indira Gandhi Nahar Kanal in Thar Desert has facilitated cultivation of crops in a desert area. So, by following land reclamation, deforestation need not be done in order to provide more land for agriculture. Instead, fallow lands can be improved and developed for agriculture. Another way in which we can conserve the land resources is afforestation. Afforestation refers to the act of planting trees. In this process, the fertility of land is preserved, soil erosion is prevented and the green cover is maintained. So, land reclamation and afforestation are one of the two methods in which we can conserve land resources. So this brings us to the end of today's discussion on land resources. Here in this lesson we initially started with the definition of land resources and then we discussed about various types of landforms. We also discussed that lands are used for several purposes according to its nature and this is known as land use. We also discussed about several factors that is leading to land degradation and how we can conserve this precious land resource. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via 
games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now